we were at a cookout. I totally didn't forget that. I, I totally remember the cookout. No! I have choices! Um... I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I don't know who I want. This is the first big choice, and I can't just like, sit. oh wait, yeah I can. Well, if I'm disappointed in my choice, I can always go back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks. Determined not to be weird about what happened la uh, that night, I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. Uh. Finn! How the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood alright? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear! I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Finn, have you met Robert yet? Yes, I believe we met. Briefly. Mm. Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Hey. Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblink unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does that mean? <sighs> How's it going? Mm. It's going good. Robert focuses on the whiskey. He's holding. He takes a long sip. Great! Look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know? Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Hey. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? <laughs> yep. Good, cool. That's cool. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until we gotta get this. Uh, we gotta get off this haunted truck. Wait, Daisy. Who was Daisy again? Is that my daughter? No, Amanda's my daughter. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Ah, uh. ah right, it's Daisy. Oh, pat, 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 pat. <sighs> Daisy and Amanda run up to us, thank God. Right. Quick, the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Aww. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess, and then we'll get out of the truck. Huh. The imaginary truck. Yeah. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts. But how will we ever survive this <laughs> arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. <laughs> Wait a second, guys. I... Are you playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah. The Mandarin, I love that show. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient curse, uh, <laughs> cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. Yeah. Alright, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep up some starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live it all! Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. 
Let's go find kindling for what well, let's go find kindling for a fire. This is adorable. <sighs> it dawns on me that I don't have anything to eat. That's not good. I get hungry very easily. This is problematic. Oh. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turned my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I skimmed the part and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does does he not want to talk? Uh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert and his days. I guess Amanda just has a sort of... Ha, I guess Amanda just sort of has a way of kids. Oh. That's kind of amazing. He doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry too much. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. <laughs> Kids, right? Gotta love him. You're required to by law. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some other, uh, some of the other fellas. Oh, this is just introductions? Okay. Um. Holy shit! Ah! Uh, I, I knew what I was clicking, but I wasn't prepared for it. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on. Smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because of a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place, and to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and prepare it and compare it to postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig, lean, uh, Craig, leans, Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. No! A choice! Ah! Uh! <laughs> but I'm kind of curious. Hmm. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one's work to an uh, of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than the uh, than another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely form formalist standpoint. If I showed you uh, a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? I am so lost right now. I shoot over a worried glance over to Greg, who returns it. Eh. Well sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had better paintings overall. Is this gonna affect? Hold on. Hee <laughs> hee. Scum saving. <laughs> <laughs> I I I want 
don't know. Hmm. Hmm? Uh. Awkward. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to click. I'm just curious about all the options, I'm not gonna lie. I'm obviously gonna pick my first one, but... Hmm. Eh? Yeah. It doesn't matter. But I don't want to sound like a douche. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. We were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you like Van Gogh or Picasso better. Hmm. Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism and the, ab <laughs> the abstractionist beauty of cubism? Man, that's all way above my head. Mm. Me too. Hey. <laughs> it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it, and that's awesome. Oh. Just one minute about that. You go, please. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I really get fired up about art stuff. Finn, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like our daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. What is this, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Yep, he's adorable. <laughs> My call now. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly le less uncool. <sighs> but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> hey Finn, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Yeah. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. <laughs> yeah, actually, Amanda. You remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue time paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Hmm? She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Hugo looks around the party. You must finally spot him. Because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway, you beggar! Are you smoking? Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. And we burned down half the yard. Hmm. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. Yes. Hugo walks back up. Holy shit. Demon boy. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernst behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Finn, this is my son, Ernst. Hello. Ernst looks away, sulking, his hand shoved deep in his pockets. 
You can nudge them impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ast. How great are you? In? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Ast? Okay, okay. I'm in 8th grade. God. You happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Um... Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Uh... <laughs> Ast! Oh, yeah, because I am totally embarrassing you. Ast puts his earbuds in and storms off and stands in <laughs> stands in the corner. Well, that was... That was sadly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Oh. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be a cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. Hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher... That's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Hey. See, that right there. You can't say that. Oh. My kid thinks I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that, as dads, We've become the machine we once ragged against, and accept our fate to unironically wear socks and sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18, and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh, no. As much as we all want. <laughs> I love this game so much. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't be, all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernst. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. Don't let us eat up your time, Finn. Go meet up the other people around the neighborhood. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, why do I get to talk to them again? Ah, that's weird. Okay. Oh, bag of time is just when I finish. Okay. So this is just extra. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Golf and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Hmm. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Why do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an interesting choice. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Finn! I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his... Aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Hmm. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Golf and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the golf lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporate as Dead Golf and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was n no way, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. 
She was the one I took to death. <laughs> Dead girl from beyond. <clears throat> Very good taste on her part. Does she take in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh my! Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself a goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would be—I would more describe myself as a twee hipster and some normcore <laughs> with some normcore leanings. <laughs> Bats are cool, though. Ah, pity. <laughs> Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Mm -hmm. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as golf? Uh. That it would, my dear. I don't believe it. we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarge, at your service. Is it Mark or Marge? I'm gonna call him Mark. Mark is cooler. <laughs> Damien finishes the sentence with a, <laughs> with a flourish and a bow, producing a simple rose and offering it to Amanda. Yeah. Amanda blushes and returns the jester with a curtsy. Hi, do you know how to treat a lady? <gasps> Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's kid, uh, twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? What? Hey, won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, come play with us forever. Gosh. Guys, enough of the creepy twin stick. We've talked about this. Okay. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Oh. Mary pops in to the conversation, wine in hand. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Oh. Where's Krish? Come on. Wasn't he with you? Yeah. <laughs> you had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. Hey, my first time... To the radio. Uh, ain't my first time to the radio. It's my fourth. I have squeezed four little. Oh. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Grish? That would be great. Hmm. I'm sure he's fine. Uh. Mary? Hmm? Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Finn yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Hmm. That's no way for a man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a birdie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Oh. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. Looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa. Is that a tattoo? Hey. Yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber brace brace <laughs> bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke uh, and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. Oh. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Mm. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you should get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. The number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler. Uh, was a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. 
I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Oh. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work with the greatest of ease. He sets patties on the, gr uh, on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and, and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't know this, Finn, but Joseph was known around here for his grillmanship. Oh. He's ungrillievable. <laughs> I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Oh. Must we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? Oh. I've never seen him make a mistake. Oh. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop! <laughs> All of the children at the party blew. Boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Wink. Alright guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Aye. Yeah. I, I loved that. That was fabulous. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like a real community here. It totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. Uh, we're happy to have you here, man. I thought you were going to go... I, I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into ba the babysitting game, she'll, she'll really make a killing. Why don't you add us all on Dadbook? Dadbook? Mm. Yeah, that's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. If you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Eh? Sorry, I'm an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry, Pops. I'll be figuring out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen and Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. <laughs> Intro finally done! I think, I assume. Considering the achievement. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? You and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Right. Because we were! Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up in dad book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Huh. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the colour Any big plans for the event? Ah. Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted. And be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Yeah. Of course. And call me if you ever need anything. Dad. You're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that, and I never will do that. Hmm. Okay. Do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda. But I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. 
I plopped down in front of the TV and turned on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roast rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman, Gavin Chapman was caught. Just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. I was just... It was just a yell lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? <sighs> I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll, reply uh, she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay. See, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only... Oh, not only not assuaging, as assuaging, as assuaging, assuaging, assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating. What is with the need of like long words? I mean, okay, sure. Exacerbating it with all the with all the yelling. So, I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send an, uh, another text. Amanda, please text me to let me know you're okay. I can't help but think all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. What's up? Sweetie, thank god you're safe. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops, I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overacting. You're gonna, not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? You weren't responding, and it was just... It was just like when your dad... I have to stop myself from tearing up. Hey. Oh, Dad. I didn't mean to... I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just... Please don't do that again. Uh, uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room, and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Uh, she eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, uh, I thought about what you said last night. Huh? I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. Mm. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... I trust you to make good choices. I also thought about it, and I'll give you your space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Team McFen? T 
Okay, next time. Mana gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkled some cheese on them? I already did. Bless you. <laughs> Amanda scarfs down the eggs uh, in the time it takes for me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Huh? What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait, mm. what? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Mm. Alright, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Aww. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which as it turns out is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. <sighs> Alright pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, you're most likely to. So this is how you choose. Is what I'm guessing. I honestly don't know. <laughs> If I was a dad, what would I choose? No, definitely not. Stop watching the History Channel, definitely not. Heh. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My trusty grill. The lost shaker of salt. Well, obviously. <laughs> I don't want to be an ass, but like... That's funny. <laughs> What are your turn-ons? Ooh. Tennis shoes with long white socks. No. No. Aww. Let's go street smarts. Street smarts is pretty hard to me. What did you want to be when you grew up? For manuals and instructionals? No. Let's just go with a good father. What's your favorite movie genre? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your ideal date? Oh. I'm sorry! <laughs> Why do you never leave the home without? A sensible cardigan. My sick vape. My book of word jumble and a pen. A cool knife. My crippling low self-esteem. <laughs> I frequently forget my phone keys while at home sometimes. Well, that's definitely not anything anymore for me. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. How proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. Wow, that's a there's a lot of grill in here. Or I can get a cup of coffee.
yeah. Ah. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could really spend all day here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them. Or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. Welcome. You got dads. Finally! I I love I love my daughter in this game. It's, it's, it's just God yes. Um Hi Finn, it's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Manda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why Finn, I never We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for a daughter? No, I am of course flattered you should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait, no. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. That was amazing. Oh my god, I love this. Okay. So because of the lack of people here, I feel bad because I kind of want to like, I want to choose with people. And it is almost time for me to move on to the next game. So I think we'll cliffhanger it here. It's been a while. Next time I will stream on time so that people will be here to actually help me pick a dad. <laughs> because I can't choose! <laughs> They're all hard. <laughs> I'm, this one gives me vibes though, but I think it's just because of his kids. Mm. I like Damien. Damien's hot. So is Robert, and Matt, and Hugo, and Brian's cuddly. Craig, Craig is basic, but he's chill. He's, he's like a bro. Hmm. Okay, also, I have... So, pastors, right? I've played some visual novels where you, like kind of date people. Pastors never end up good. <laughs> Pastors are always the route that leads down to, like, something a bit more conspiracy -y. I don't know why it's like that, but it's just what I've experienced. So, uh, we'll, um, we'll see about that one. <laughs> One more save, a little luck, and then we head to the title. <laughs>